Should superheroes have families? I mean, if you think about it, it changes the dynamic of a hero to the point where you simply cannot have stories be the same without it impacting um, those other characters that are the families, right? So I think the answer to that is really, it depends on what kind of story you want to tell. So for example, the Fantastic Four is a, it's completely about family, right? It's literally the four people who, through friendship and through biological relationships, are a family. So everything that happens to one of them affects all of them in some form or another. Now, the problem is when you have stories like a Spider-Man who has a long-standing history of being a superhero who's pretty much a loner, now when he gets burdened with like a, a child and a, a, a wife, he can no longer do anything without having it impact his child and wife, nor should it. Now, what this means is he basically has to have all those people involved in most of his stories. So even if, let's say, for example, he's hooking up with Mary Jane and their boyfriend, girlfriend, he's still, she doesn't know who he is. She doesn't realize that he's Spider-Man. Well, that's still, there's still a lot of room for our stories um, because at that point, what you're doing is... He, as a hero, he's doing everything independently because Mary Jane doesn't know he's Spider-Man, so she doesn't care what happens to Spider-Man really, right? So then you run into a situation now that when he's married, suddenly everything that happens, not only as Peter Parker, but as a hero, Mary Jane's concerned about, right? Because she knows the identity and it becomes an issue. Um, if there's a kid involved now, it's like, well, think about the kid. And so everything he does gets kind of thought through the lens of I have people I need to watch out for now, right? So what does help in that case is the um the secret identity. Even though that's that's a bit of a trope, it is a trope that works because he's hiding his family and protecting them by being a superhero in a mask, right? Now where it becomes kind of a a problem though is when you you run into this weird situation where a lot of writers will start taking everybody who's around the main hero and giving them powers. For example, let's say you're Lois Lane. Well, the idea is that if you are Superman, you are a very unique and special person. However, when you start giving Lois Lane powers, it kind of takes that away. Then you give Jimmy Olsen powers. Then suddenly Lana Lane has powers. So everybody has these these superpowers, and you'll see this in basically any place where there is a, a hero who has a wife and a kid. Eventually, what they'll do is everybody gets superpowers. You saw this in like the Iron Man movies, where uh, Pepper Potts suddenly became a an iron person herself and had powers and was able to fight the bad guys. And what happens is it takes away the normalcy of... A story because then you get you you once you go down that path you can never go back right because once you have a situation where then the normal people around the hero are, are suddenly um, powered up themselves then you you go oh okay well I guess everybody can be a superhero right and so it's one of those things that, that as a reader really bothered me when I'd see it in in comics. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it, and I do believe it can be done well if it's done in a way that's smart and you know it's temporary or you know it's a unique situation. The problem is when they suddenly go, oh, well, since you're married to the hero, guess what? You will now also have a way to have powers, right? Um, you know, and sometimes it's done controversially. I know like the Thor run when they gave Jane thoughts, powers, basically, um, then what's the point of having Jane? Because here's the thing. You would want a regular person to balance out the hero. If it was just heroes dating heroes, that's one thing. I get it. It's a different type of dynamic. But the point is when you have a super-powered person who's in a relationship with a what I would just refer to as a normie, well, that brings a, a 
sort of um, you know protector element into it, where the hero now has to consider his actions and also consider how he can protect the identity and protect his family and his kids and all that stuff, right? So that's what I would say is probably the biggest thing that bothers me. I'm kind of going on a rant here, but um, I I don't like it when they take the special, unique ability of a hero and just give it to everybody, right? And it brings in the question, you know, should we be in a world where um, heroes are just so common that it's not a big deal? Or should it be something that when civilians or normal people see a hero, it is a huge deal, you know? And that's kind of the, the difference between having uh, 100,000 mutants in the Marvel Universe versus having a few special people that's really awe-inspiring, right? Because if you are in New York City and you see Spider-Man, you go, wow, it's Spider-Man, and it's a big, huge deal. However, if you're in that same New York City and Marvel where you're surrounded by all kinds of um, events like uh, the Avengers and the Mutants and... um, I don't know, the Defenders, all kinds of different people, suddenly it's like, oh, it's just another hero, right? So then should we have, um, you know, should the universe make it really easy to get power so then it just becomes kind of a, um everyday thing and pretty much at any point somebody has a 50-50 chance of becoming a superhero or should it be something that's very special and we should limit that, right? Um, and I, I think there's ways to do both, but... It's just something to consider, you know, and um, what I don't like is when things change that fundamentally don't work for the character. So, for example, let's say you're, uh, you, you write Gambit. Gambit has always, in his entire life, been a bit of a ladies' man, right? He does have a romance with Rogue. He did have a romance with Belladonna. But at the end of the day, he is a ladies' man. So the trope of him kind of hooking up with various girls, using his quote-unquote charm to influence ladies because they like him is uh, kind of a core part of the character as he uh, came into the X-Men. Now, what happened is they did put him in a relationship with Rogue, which um, I I am not a fan of um, because of the events of uh, Uncanny X-Men when he was put in trial and she just kind of left him to die. But in any case, now that they're married... Now it's no longer Gambit, the sort of um, lone cowboy character. Now it's, hey, here's a couple who have to do everything somewhat together, right? And there is not one without the other. So it's no longer, the identity of the, the hero is no longer Gambit. It's now Gambit and Rogue. So do we go back and put them through a divorce or do we continue to move forward? Because if you really think about it, Gambit can't really do anything without having Rogue involved in it at some point, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, you could argue that, well, that was always the case because they were a couple from years ago. But I mean, realistically, Gambit is much cooler as a single dude um, than he is with a wife. And I think that was the problem that Spider-Man ran into in the in the 80s and 90s is when he married Mary Jane, there was a, a, basically every story he was in, every arc, it was always something that had to be part of the stories. And it became a burden on Spider-Man. So there were some good stories that came out there, which was basically Mary Jane being concerned about Spider-Man getting killed or injured. But... Other than that, there wasn't anything that deep. And then what happened is you you start thinking about the story as well. Where's the drama coming from then? You know, before when nobody knew who Spider-Man was, the drama was him hiding his secret identity while trying to make things work. You know, how do I go on a date with Mary Jane while I've got to fight Doc Ock? You know, that kind of stuff. That's where the drama came from. Now, that meant that he was constantly concerned as was the the reader about him getting found out and what kind of impact that would have on his personal life but now that he was married then you had this situation where basically the drama became well arguments it was just 
Mary Jane complaining and Peter Parker arguing with Mary Jane. That's not fun. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it could be a little bit, but for the most part, it just it turned the character of Mary Jane into a nagging wife, <laughs> which you don't read superhero comics to have a to read about a nagging a wife or um for the most part about the drama so I, that was the the problem with it how they changed that storyline with uh, mefesto and all that stuff i <laughs> i'm not a big fan of but i get why they did it because now you created that freedom and you have a lot more options as well um I, I guess. I mean, I think if there was a good writer on that book, they can make it happen. But um, that was just one of the challenges. Anyhow, let me know what you think. Should superheroes have families? Should they get married? Should normal people in superheroes' lives all of a sudden get superpowers to create a storyline? Or should it be special to be a hero? Thanks for listening.